Strange Wills. Starring the distinguished Hollywood actor Warren William and featuring Carlton Young with Howard Culver and an all-star Hollywood cast. Original music by Del Castillo. Dead men's wills are often strange. We cannot attempt to understand them or try to find the answers. We can but tell the story. This is Warren William bringing you the story, Dance Director. But first... And now back to Warren William as John Francis O'Connell in Dance Director. An opening night on Broadway invariably brings back a flood of memories and stories about the private lives of many of the stars whose names have written theatrical history. One name in particular, that of Margot Davis, stands out above all the rest. I knew Margot when she began her climb on Broadway... In fact, I was her father's lawyer. It was upon his suggestion that I drew his will with the provision that his only child and heir at law must first earn her own living for one year before acquiring his estate, roughly estimated at around $10 million. He wanted her to learn the value of a dollar the hard way. I remember the day I called upon her at the Davis Hut townhouse. It was a few weeks after her father had been buried. I found Margot in the music room. May I interrupt? Oh, <laughs> John, you startled me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hated to interrupt your playing, Margot. Well, I'm glad you did. I'm afraid it's a dreary old piece anyway. <laughs> Well, come on in and sit down, won't you? Thank you. Uh, Margot, may I have your undivided attention for just a few minutes until I tell you what I have to say? I'll be very attentive. Good. Now then, Margot, you've had rather a um, sheltered life to date, haven't you? Mm, extremely. Did you uh, learn anything? <laughs> well, that depends. I know which fork to use at dinner. I know how to dress, conservatively. Did you learn how to work for a living? Work? Well, quite frankly, John, I've never earned a penny in my life. But I'm not afraid of work, if that's what you mean. Your father was a hard worker, Margot. He loved it. He did more than love it. He believed in it. Just what are you getting at, John? Only this. His estate will net around $10 million. But in order to make sure that you learn the value of a dollar, he made a special provision in his last will. A special provision? What do you mean? He insisted that you earn your own living for one year before you come into your inheritance. One year? Earn my... John, that's wonderful. Wonderful? Well, of course. Do you know I've envied every girl I've ever seen catching the subway on her way to work? Envied? Why? Those girls had a look of independence about them. They were self-supporting, self-sufficient. You mean you've wanted to work? For years, but I've never had a chance. What can you do, Margot? What sort of work can you learn to keep you alive for a whole year? Did you ever hear of a yen? Yes, of course. Well, I've had a yen for almost two years. Uh -huh. I'll start looking for a job in the morning, and when I get it, you'll see a transformation you'll never forget. What will it be, Margot? Margot Davis, Broadway Chorus Girl. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
True to her word, Margot Davis started out bright and early the next morning to look for a job as a chorus girl. She bought a copy of Variety and read that Bert Frost, dance director of the Broadway Follies, was holding auditions. Margot caught the subway and went over to the Harris Theater. It was jammed with girls, beautiful girls, all trying out for the dancing line. All right now, chicks, line up across the stage. That's right, that's right, spread out, spread out. Give yourself plenty of room. Hey, uh, Blondie, Blondie, uh, you and the polka dot sunsuit. Park the gum. This is for the Follies, baby, the Follies, not Minsky's burlesque. Okay, okay, that's fine. Now listen, listen, chicks. Pete here at the piano is going to do a time step rhythm. Now, uh, starting with the girl at the left, I want each of you to pick up the beat when your turn comes and do about four bars the time step. Do you all get it? Yeah, yeah sure. We all right then, Pete. Let's have it. Okay, honey. Okay. Next. Uh, what's your name? Alice Allison. All right, Alice. See me after rehearsal. <laughs> Come on, next. Let's go. Oh, no, no. Oh, hold it. Hold it, Pete. Uh, what's your name, kid? Uh, Margo. Margo Davis, Mr. Frost. Well, Margo, you've got a nice figure. Your face is cute, too. But, honey, this is a tryout for a dance line, not a kangaroo hop. <laughs> okay, next girl. Well, Margot walked slowly downstairs to the dressing room. She learned quickly and bitterly that it takes more than a pretty face and a nice figure to crash a Broadway chorus line. As she entered the dressing room, an old-time Broadway hoofer, Rena Blake, saw her in tears and walked over to her. What's the matter, kid? Been kicked around a bit? <laughs> he said... He said I danced like a kangaroo. Why, that's so-and-so. Yeah, but that's just like him. He's just a Broadway jerk for my dough. But I... I wanted so hard Yeah, to... I know. You wanted to make the grade on Broadway. And the guy that wrote that song, There's a Million Tears for Every Light on Broadway, wasn't kidding, was he? I, I guess not. What's your name? Margot. Margot Davis. What's yours? Rena Blake. The oldest hoofer on the stem. I ain't bragging, honey, but three facelifts ago, I look classier than all them dames up there rolling the one. And I can still outdance any of them. Oh, Rena, I feel terrible. I, I counted on this job so much. What'd that old goat say to you, honey? He said I, I had a cute face and that my figure was good, but... Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. You can't do the time step. That's right. Ever danced before? Just a little, for fun. Well, I say you got a lot of nerve, kid. Any girl who tries to crash a Burt Frost production and doesn't even know the time step. Oh, oh boy. But I didn't know it was so hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, you still want to make it? Uh-huh. But how can I? He knows me now. He wouldn't let me try again. Listen. He's going to try out 600 babes today and tomorrow. But I still don't know how to do... Suppose you get into your street clothes and come with me, huh? With you? Where are you... Now, don't go asking questions. But I'll tell you this. I got a little apartment over on East 54th. I got a tap board, too. Get it? You mean... That... I ain't promising nothing, kid. But if you're game and your feet hold out, I'm going to teach you what you need before tryouts tomorrow morning. And then you can come back and knock Mr. Bert Frost for a loop. But won't he... Mr. Frost, recognize me, Rena? Recognize you? Oh, 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 honey, listen. With 600 pairs of gans to look at, that guy ain't gonna remember your face. Believe me. All right, honey, let's try it again. Now, remember, and right foot, pick it up, hop down. Left foot, pick it up, hop down. Right foot, pick it up, hop down. Left foot, that's it. That's it, kid. You got it. You got it. Oh, Rena, I'm dead. I'm exhausted, but I'm happy. Yeah, I'll bet you are, kid. 
Well, it's 4 a.m., honey. Better knock off for a few hours of shut-eye so we can be in first-class shape by 10, 10 o'clock tomorrow. Oh, I'll be asleep before you can turn off the light. <laughs> oh, I just can't wait to see Bert Frost's face when you go into your dance in the morning. I just can't wait. <laughs> across the stage. Now, pay attention. When you get into your practice clothes, I want each of you to do a waltz clog for me this morning. Do about four bars each, okay? Okay. Right, that dirty double crosser. Waltz clog, waltz clog. Oh, Rena, what can I do? Wait, wait. Let's stay right here on the wings and watch. And then when your turn yeah, comes... Yeah, when my turn comes, I'll still only know the time step. Oh, Rena, there's only a few girls left. It's almost time for me to go on stage. What'll I do? Get in there and pitch, kid. Remember, it's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, all five. All right, one, all two, right, last group on stage. Hurry up, hurry up. Line up, girls. We haven't one, got two, all three, day. Four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, okay, two, three, four, five. same thing. One, two, three, now pick up the beat and give me about four bars of the waltz clog. Starting off with the first girl at the left. All right, Pete. That's all. That's all. Next girl. Now, who told you you could dance, baby? My mother. Well, go back home and tell her to guess again. <laughs> all right, next girl. Uh, hey, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold it, Pete. Hey, hey, you. Haven't I seen your legs before? Uh, no. No, I don't think Weren't so. Weren't you here yesterday? Uh, here? Yeah, right here on this stage. You couldn't do the time step, remember? Oh, no, I can do the time step. Want to see? Listen, honey, I'll bet you a job in the line against a hamburger sandwich that you can't. You will, huh? All right, turn on the music. Okay, Pete, give the little lady music. <laughs> okay, okay, honey, you win. I guess my eyes are going bad. First time in my life I ever forgot a pair of legs. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, uh, honey, you're in. Oh, thank you, Mr. Frost. Thanks. Uh, don't thank me, honey. What's more, when we're through here, I'll buy you that hamburger, too. <laughs> oh, well, that's the way Margot Davies crashed her way into the Broadway Follies. The hard way. From that day on, Bert Frost saw more of Margot than just at rehearsals. In fact, their backstage romance was the talk of the cast. Everything would have been all right, too, if Gloria Wainwright, the leading lady, hadn't heard about it. She, too, it seems, was in love with the gentleman. And now a chorus girl, some cheap little minx, she surmised, was trespassing on what she thought was her property. She decided to have a talk with Bert. Darling... What is all this chatter about you and that... that chorus girl? Oh, you mean Margot? Why, what have you heard? What have I heard? What haven't I heard? Bert, you're making a fool of yourself. What makes you think so, Gloria? When the day comes that Broadway's biggest dance director starts chasing around with some little dame from the dance line... Now, just a minute, young lady. Get this straight. Margot Davis is no dame. But how do you think I feel about it, Bert? After all, you did ask me to marry you. That was last season, honey, and anyway, you turned me down, remember? Well, maybe I did, but there was a reason for it then. Oh, yeah? Of course, darling, I had a career to think of. You still have. Well, maybe I have, but on the other hand, maybe I'm ready to reconsider. No, you're not, kid, and you know it. I know you better than you think I do. I resent that. Go right ahead, but it's true. You know, Gloria, once upon a time, I really thought you'd make a swell wife, a partner. Now I know better. What do you mean? I would have been, uh, well, it would have been Mr. and Mrs. Gloria Wainwright. I'll always be Gloria Wainwright, Bert. Don't I know it? You don't love me. You love you. It's degrading, Bert, to have some little gutter snipe take my place in your affections. You're just burned, kid. Just supposing I withdraw from the cast. 
What would the great director do then? I'd have Margot Davis take your place. You don't know it yet, Gloria, but that kid's got everything you've got and maybe a little bit more. All right, have it your own way. But I'm going to tell you something. Shoot. I'll give you odds that she will never be around to open the show. What odds? Ha <laughs> ha, brave, aren't you? Well, just wait until I get through with this. Now, this. supposing you stick to dancing and leave the rest to me. You'll be welcome to the leavings, Bert Faust, after I get through with Margot Davis. Hang around and pick up the pieces. Act Two of Dance Director, written by Ken Crapine and directed by Robert Webster Light, follows in just a moment. First, here is a word from your announcer. And now back to Dance Director, starring Warren William as John Francis O'Connell. The night before the opening, Gloria Wainwright caught Margot alone in the dressing room. This is what she'd been patiently waiting for. I want to talk to you, Miss Davis. Go ahead, I'm listening. Bert told you what I said. Yes. Well... Well, what? No $60 a week is going to take away anything I want from me, understand? I haven't tried to take anything from you, Gloria. If Bert and I happen to be in love, that happens to be our affair. I told Bert to hang around and pick up the pieces. Yes, I know. And he's going to get them in about two minutes. Stand up, you you creature, while I slap your little face. You can try. All right, I'm up. You did slap me. That's just the beginning. You bet it is. <gasps> there, returned with interest. All right. You asked for it. <laughs> hey, let, let go of my hair, you contemptible. <laughs> now what about those pieces? What you? I'll get them in just <laughs> you. Hey, oh, hey, hey, you two. Clever. What's going on in here? Stop it. Stop it. Break it up. But Oh, this beats the devil. Less than 24 hours before the opening night, I find my star in a brawl. Well, why don't you say something? We, we were just having a nice, friendly little discussion. You look like it, both of you. Get up, Gloria. All right, Bert. Lay off of us. I, I'm really going to give you something to worry about. What? I, I think I sprained my ankle. Sprained your ankle? Here, let me look at oh, it. Oh, wait. Let me help you. Oh, it hurts. <laughs> Bert, it's really a sprain, all right. Look how it's swelling. That's all I need. Now what am I going to do? Oh, you still have Margot. You said she could take my place. Cut the kidding, Gloria. Oh, can't she? Kid, I told you before, but I'll tell you again. You're a great artist, tops. That's why you're in my show. Oh, thanks, Bert. That made it worthwhile. Uh, Bert, why not let me take her up to my, to my room? I'll stay with her. I'm sure I can get the swelling down. I'll have her ready for tomorrow night. Let me try. You... You do that for me after all. Of course, Gloria. It's our only chance. Okay, kid, go out and get a cab. Take her home, and I'll send a doctor out as soon as I can locate one. All right, Bert. I'll have a cab and a jiffy. Come on, kid. Tie up that hair, and I'll carry you. Bert. Yeah? It's things like this that make me happy I'm in the theater. Imagine a little chorus girl who has everything to gain doing this. She's a real trooper, Bert. That's nothing, kid. So are you. Believe me. We're all 
almost there, Gloria. Say, we're going to an elegant part of town. How'd you ever find a room out here? Oh, it isn't much of a place. Here we are, ladies. Here we are? Say, what is this? We've stopped in front of a, a palace. Don't you know whose house this is, lady? It's the home of the late Dexter Davis, the multimillionaire. Dexter Davis. Davis? Well, then you're... you're his... Yes, Gloria. I'm Margot Davis, his daughter. The swelling's going down. Look, Gloria. Oh, yeah, I can see that it is. Uh, and look, I can wiggle my ankle. Isn't that wonderful? We'll have you ready for the opening. Margot... I want to tell you something. Yeah, Gloria? I'm sorry. Awfully sorry. Oh, it's all right. I guess maybe I had it coming. No, you didn't, but... Oh, well, what's the use of talking about it? Go ahead and tell me. I, I wasn't fooling when I said I loved him. Honestly. I believe you. Bert's a swell egg, isn't he? The very best. I've known him ever since I got my first job on Broadway, almost ten years ago. He's... He's been wonderful to me, too. Does he know who you really are? No. To him, I'm just Margot Davis, $60 a week hoofer. And you don't want me to tell him? Oh, please don't. I'm on my own in spite of everything you see. Kid, I've got to hand it to you. You're a better sport than I am. Much better. Well, good luck, Margot. No hard feelings? No. No hard feelings. The opening night of the Broadway Follies turned out to be a wonderful thing. The show was sensational. Gloria Wainwright danced her way into the hearts of everyone. During the intermission, I received a note from Margot. She asked me to be best man at a wedding. Would I drive to Jersey with a marriage party? <laughs> well, of course I would. After all, Margot was old enough to know what she was doing, and if this was what she wanted, well, it was all right with me. We left by car right after the final curtain. There were four of us. Margot, Gloria, Bert Frost, and I. Finally, we ended up at the home of a sleepy justice of the peace. Uh, getting me out of a nice warm bed at three in the morning ain't my idea of fun, but when there's two happy hearts to splice, well, <laughs> I always say there's no time like the present. Uh, I'm as nervous as a wet hand. All right, son, just relax while I explain the three ways which I can marry you up. Three ways? Yep, that's what I said. Now, the first way is just saying the words, and it's over in less than 20 seconds. You wouldn't like that. That costs two bucks. Oh, uh, and what's the second way, Justice? Well, that's a bit fancier. My wife, Abigail, rings wedding bells whilst I pronounce the fatal words. Uh, give them a listen, Abby. Uh, pretty, ain't it? Well, it, it's, it's divine. Well, with the words and bells, it costs three dollars. That's my grand special. But uh, what's the third way? Well, I'm coming to that, young fella. That's what I call my super deluxe special. Super deluxe special? Well, that sounds simply angelic. Tears, too, yes. I thought of it myself. Well, sir, for the super special deluxe, my wife Abigail shakes the bells with her left hand and plays Oh, Promise Me on the organ with her right. Uh, give the folks a sample, Abby. All right, folks, the super special deluxe cost a $5 bill, but you won't regret it. You'll carry the memory of it with you down the golden path. Now then, which are you going to choose? The super special deluxe, of course. I want to remember this night forever. Well, sir, I admire your good judgment, yes, sir. Now, folks, will the couple to be married get right over here in front of me? Witnesses, two steps to the rear. There, there, there you are. There we have it. Okay, now hold hands. Now, just a minute till I get my book open here. Uh, <clears throat> ashes to ashes, dust to... Oh, oop! <laughs> Almost read the burial service by mistake. <laughs> All right, here we go. Abby, bells and music, please. Do you, Bert Frost, take this young lady... Not so loud with the bells, Abby. Do you, Bert Frost, take this young lady here to be your side, to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. And do you, young lady, take this man to be your lawful wedded spouse? I do, I do. Then, by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the state, I do hereby pronounce you 
men and wife. Not so loud, Abby. Five dollars, please. Thank you. Now, whilst you two lovebirds enjoy the first tender kiss of wedded bliss, I'll make out the certificate. <laughs> I know from experience it takes about that long. Warren William will be back in just a moment to tell you the rest of the story, Dance Director. First, here is a brief message from your announcer. And now back to Dance Director, starring Warren William as John Francis O'Connell. <laughs> Got it time pretty well, ain't I? All right, folks, you can come up for air now. <sighs> that was a long kiss, Justice. I reckon you're right. But they've just been married. That makes it different. Now, you two newlyweds come over here to the table and sign the marriage register. Uh, you first, son. Uh, where do I sign? Here? Yep, sign there where it says bridegroom. Bert Frost, bridegroom. Uh, that's fine, that's fine. Now, you young lady, you next. Just sign your name right under his, hmm? where it says bride. Sign it just like it is on your marriage license. Let's see now. Oh, yes, it is. Sign it uh, Gloria Wainwright Frost. <laughs> Well, Gloria, Bert, and Margot have been the best of friends for years. Margot worked her way up to starring roles and can be seen in many of Broadway's musicals. And as to Gloria, well, <laughs> she's still a star, but not on Broadway. She's the leading lady of the Bert Frost household, and incidentally, they're not known as Mr. and Mrs. Gloria Wainwright. <laughs> Next week, I have a story about one of the strangest wills ever written. Lefty Light, underworld gangster, was found dead in his bulletproof car on the outskirts of the city. There was no doubt in the minds of the police, but that he was murdered. Before he died, Lefty found time to write a last will on a piece of newspaper. In his will, he left his entire fortune to a young and beautiful cigarette girl in an uptown nightclub. But amazingly enough, Lefty Light had never spoken to this girl in his life, nor had she ever seen him. It took Mike Shannon, young cub reporter, to crack the case wide open and bring the murderer to bay. We call this exciting story... Death is My Destiny. This is Warren William inviting you to join us again next week. Strange Wills is a Telaways feature produced in Hollywood. Names, places, and events have all been changed so that no reflection can fall on any person or persons, living or dead. Music